I give to you the most foolish vice president in the history of vice presidents, her, Kamala Harris. Okay. <laughs> how do you... How do you... <laughs> it is actually kind of hilarious and also kind of sad for all of us that she is finally going to the border about four months or so after Joe Biden made her in charge of all things immigration and border security. Madam Vice President, thank you. I gave you a tough job and you're, uh, you're smiling, <laughs> but there's no one better capable of trying to organize this. Place. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and for having the confidence in me. All right, so now we hear today she's going to the border. Politico first reported that, yes, she's going to the border probably this week. You want to know why she's really going? It's not for the good of the country. It's to beat Donald Trump to the punch. Donald Trump put this out last week, that he was going to visit Greg Abbott at the decimated southern border on Wednesday, June 30th. Well, that is next Wednesday, and they can't have the former president doing the job that the president should be doing, so Kamala Harris is going. Folks, they are still obsessed with President Trump. Big time. Remember when Joe Biden was in Geneva last week, walking around, meeting with Vladimir Putin? You know what was on his mind? <laughs> Donald Trump. We actually have proof of this. When he would make speeches and uh, take out that little card with all of his notes on it, take a look at the card. This has not been doctored. This is the real thing. We're going to make it vertical for you. His talking points in Geneva before the international media, all about Donald Trump. They are obsessed with him. They don't like him. They're worried about him. And this trip, Kamala Harris, it's just done to beat Trump. If Trump weren't going, she wouldn't be going. Why is the vice president visiting the border this week when earlier this month she dismissed a trip like that, saying it would be a grand gesture? She also said um, in an interview with NBC that she would be open to going to the border if it was an appropriate time. She said that after she said that. So that's important context. Important context, yeah, like she's going to the border because uh, it's, <laughs> this is the most honest administration. Just ask her, just ask her. What has she been focusing on? She says, not the border, you can't worry about the border. The border's for amateurs. The pros worry about the root causes. We are focused on addressing both the acute factors and the root causes of migration. The root causes of migration. Dealing with root causes? You can't say you care about the border without caring about the root causes. Dealing with the root causes of migration. We better care about the root causes. The root causes. The root cause of our current crisis is this. Kamala Harris, Joe Biden, the far left, they like this situation. They do. All those people coming across the border, cheap labor uh, and votes. That's what they see. And they want to keep them coming. That is the root cause, their deliberate negligence, all right? Meanwhile, the border is in shambles, but this country, we're seeing great Americans step forward to protect our heritage. Uh, have you seen these school board meetings around the country? Perhaps the ground zero of this fight um, to keep critical race out of our schools is Loudoun County, Virginia. Uh, if you ever been to Loudoun County, if you ever went through Dulles Airport, you've been there. These are great people, and they're saying enough is enough when it comes to critical race theory and woke culture in schools. They've been making real progress, these folks, ordinary people from all walks of life. And what happens when you start making real progress? They try to shut you down. Ms. Corbo, can I record your vote, please? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 9-0. Public comment is now ended. We will move to our next agenda item. They cut the mic. People were upset. Fortunately, everybody's got a camera these days. You can't silence this. What's the rush to close the debate about something so potentially harmful to our children? What is the rush? Folks, it got ugly, but you know what? That's what happens when you try to stifle free speech. The cops came in, arrested a couple of people. This is getting ugly. It doesn't have to be, but it's where we are. You know, 
this is a country where freedom of speech should be a given. Why are they trying to hassle the gym teacher down there, Tanner Cross? Have you heard about this guy? Freedom of speech? Well, they're actually trying to order this guy what language he should be using. <laughs> for all of human history, there were basically two pronouns for the sexes, him, her, she, he, right? Got us this far. They're trying to order this guy, phys ed teacher, to use the gender neutral pronouns of uh, certain students choosing. He doesn't like it. He says it's against his religious views and scientific views, and he spoke up about it. My name is Tanner Cross, and I'm speaking out of love for those who suffer with gender dysphoria. 60 Minutes this past Sunday interviewed over 30 young people who transitioned, but they felt led astray because lack of pushback or how easy it was to make physical changes to their bodies in just three months. They are now detransitioning. It's not my intention to hurt anyone, but there are certain truths that we must face when ready. I love all of my students, but I will never lie to them regardless of the consequences. I'm a teacher, but I serve God first, and I will not affirm that a biological boy can be a girl and vice versa, because it's against my religion, it's lying to a child, it's abuse to a child, and it's sinning against our God. You're suspended pending termination. Yeah, they're trying to fire this guy. They actually suspended him um, because he would not use these gender neutral pronouns. What's the big deal? A judge took a look at this and said, give me a break put him back on the job. They're still trying to fire the guy. This is such a worthy fight, and it's happening all across the country. We don't want our schools to become like the streets of America, which, certainly in urban centers, have become chaotic as a direct result of the Black Lives Matter movement, uh, the stigmatization of police, total disrespect. We don't want that happening in the schools. That should be reasonable. That should be a no-brainer. Hey, we heard from Joe Biden just a little while ago because you know what's happening here. Democrats, uh, they're in charge right now, and they know that people are getting freaked out by all of the violence across the country, which has been normalized by the media, but not by regular people. There's something really horrible, and it's on their watch. So what are they trying to do? Act like they're doing something about it. I've been at this a long time. And there are things we know that work that reduce gun violence and violent crime and things that we don't know about. But things we know about, background checks for purchasing a firearm are important. Ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. No one needs to have a weapon that can fire over 30, 40, 50, even up to 100 rounds, unless you think the deer are wearing Kevlar vests or something. How's that for energy? How's that for force? How's that for innovation and bold new ideas? It was the same warmed over stuff that's not going to do anything. Joe Biden has been at this for a long time. 1973, he got there, and he's still trying the same old silly ideas that don't change anything. But at least they'll be able to, I guess, put it in a commercial or say they got something done or tried to do something if it wasn't for those Republicans. He totally squandered his moral authority. We were talking about that earlier this week, last summer, when he couldn't utter the phrase law and order. And all of this, which should have been universally condemned by any responsible person, he gave a pass to. In fact, he gave a green light to. In weeks like this, we see it plainly that we're a country with an open wound. And none of us can turn away. None of us can be silent. None of us can any longer can we hear the words, I can't breathe and do nothing. That's what he did. He did nothing. Open wound, he let that wound fester. And with his words, carefully selected, encouraged the violence. Shameful, shameful. We all know this, Joe, and you can't fool us. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.